Welcome to this episode of My Favorite Authors. Today I want to highlight a few authors that I studied during my doctoral ministry dissertation. It began with two authors, John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila. Both of them lived in Spain during the 1500s. This was an interesting time. This was the time of the Protestant Reformation happening in Europe. We have Martin Luther in Germany bringing about reforms there, John Calvin in France and uh, Geneva bringing about reforms, Eric Zwingli on the scene bringing about his reforms, and the Protestant reforms happening in Great Britain under Henry VIII. So a lot of changes, the church being confronted on many sides with people calling for change, calling for reform. Spain also had the reformers, although it played out differently in Spain. Spain had the reformers, but they also had their Spanish Inquisition. So the Inquisition uh, was suspect of anything that hinted at some of the Protestant reforms. So they were very diligent in trying to uh, prevent that from spreading in their country. However, there were also people who felt very strongly that reform needed to, to take place within the church. They saw the corruption, they saw the problems and the issues of their day. So they called for reform. John of the Cross was one of those reformers. Teresa of Avila was one of those reformers as well. John of the Cross and a couple of his friends, as an act of protest, took off their shoes and went barefoot, being known as the Discalced Carmelites, the barefoot, the shoeless Carmelites, as an act of protest, calling for reform, calling to return back to their roots. John of the Cross wrote, uh, a, he wrote quite a bit. Uh, he wrote a lot of poetry, and it's actually beautiful poetry if you look at the, the rhyme and rhythm in the Spanish language that he wrote in. And he wrote commentaries on his poetry that became nonfiction books that described a relationship with God that grows and progresses over time, if we are willing. Teresa of Avila wrote a few things as well. Which is her interior castle, and if you look at her hometown, it was like a mighty fortress. And you can see that castle imagery being something that's part of the town she grew up in. And using that castle imagery, going through the outer courts of, a, of the castle and working our way into the center where we meet the king. And she used that as an allegory of our own spiritual journey. As we grow in our relationship with God, the stages and and process we go through in order to come to that center point where we can truly encounter the King of Kings, Jesus. She also wrote an autobiography. We see her own spiritual journey written and presented in text. And another one, The Way of Perfection, talking about that climactic state that we come to in our relationship with God. All about that spiritual progress. John the Cross also, as I said, wrote about spiritual progress. And uh, he, he wrote many, many volumes, but uh, one of the most prominent works was The Dark Night of the Soul. John of the Cross talked about in our relationship with God, we come, go through this process where it feels like God is distant, where it even feels like God has abandoned us. A, a state in which we feel the darkness and the heaviness that life can throw at us. But John of the Cross also saw this as a part of that process of growth. Those seasons where it seems like God is distant from us can be some of the most fruitful in our own relationship with God and ultimately coming to a place where we can truly encounter God in this life. Now, John of the Cross was also highly influenced by, here's a, a third author that I included, the writings of Pseudo-Dionysius. These were writings that came about around the 5th or 6th century in Syria and written by somebody who took on the pseudonym of Dionysius the Areopagite, a name drawn from the Bible. In the book of Acts, we see the Apostle Paul on Mars Hill preaching to the uh, people highly influenced by the philosophy of their time, a polytheistic culture, shrines to many gods, and the Apostle Paul sees a shrine to the unknown God. And he says, let me make known to, that, make known to you that which is unknown. And he proclaimed Jesus to the people. We see a little tiny bit, sentence in that text that many came to faith that day. 
and one in particular was named Dionysius the Areopagite. Now later, the pseudo-Dionysius who took on this name lived in a time when there's a resurgence of some of the Greek philosophies. Some who drew, were drawing from the works of Plato and now what we know as the Neoplatonists. And their writings became very prominent during that time. So what I think the pseudo-Dionysius was doing was borrowing that name to show that Jesus was the fulfillment of all that the Greek philosophers were longing for. And the pseudo-Dionysius talked about our relationship with God being a threefold process. We begin with purgation. We need to get rid of the old junk. We are purged of it. Purgation. Then we come to this point of illumination where our understanding of God gets more clear. That we begin to know God personally in this life. As we deal with our junk, then we can come to this point of really knowing God in this life. And if we continue to progress in that relationship with God, we can come to this point of, he used the term enlightenment, but it's this idea of our union with God, a close and abiding relationship with God where our will aligns with the will of God and our love aligns with the love of God. Highly influential in the works of John of the Cross, um, maybe through second or third or fourth hand upon Teresa of Avila as well, not quite as direct as John of the Cross. But all of them talking about this process of growing in our relationship with God, coming to a climax where we can truly know God at a deep and abiding level. For John of the Cross, it's about coming to this point of contemplation where we can passively enter the presence of God, contemplate his goodness, and just know that he is there and bask in his presence. For Teresa, it was more about an active faith. As we grow towards that union with God, we become active in this world and we make a difference in this world. And I think when the two of those can come together, it's beautiful, where we bask in the presence of God and then we go out and make a difference in this world. So as I said, the, I had actually four authors in this dissertation. The fourth one was John Wesley. I wanted to see what he had to say about all this. And I covered John in a previous episode but one of the difference was John didn't believe that God would cause darkness. John believed that that's things the world throws at us. Or sometimes we put ourselves in, in dark places. But John did believe that when the world throws difficulties our way, when we go through tough times, God is there, God is working, and God can bring about some beautiful things in our lives to grow us into a deep and abiding relationship with him. So keep on reading. Read broadly, read deeply, and read often.